All right, so we got a pretty easy job today. Uh, we're going to put this oil seal in the, in the uh, tail shaft housing of a car. It's kind of a coincidence this particular car is coming in today because we been doing a little reflection. Uh, I grew up in the 80s, so I grew up on Dukes of Hazards, Smoking the Bandit, all that good stuff. You know, Dukes of Hazards, had a big crush on her. Grew up watching him race, number three. Of course, we got all the muscle car. All the muscle car stuff on my uh, wall. So, with this particular car, uh, I'm not, I wasn't, I didn't really get into this year car until I got quite a bit older when that movie Cobra came out and they had that 49 Mercury in that movie. That's the first time I actually noticed these particular cars. And actually, this is probably the old, I've been working on cars for 30 years. This is probably literally the oldest car I've ever worked on in my entire career, turned a wrench on. Uh, as I've gotten older, I've appreciated these cars a little more. And it's just amazing to think that this car was built 70 years ago. It's still on the road, and actually it's in really good shape. I'll take, have you take a look at this car. This is a 50 Ford Special four-door. Uh, it's got the old flathead Ford V8 in it. Seems to run pretty good. Uh, evidently, this car was, redid, was redone uh, sometime probably in the 90s, we were thinking. And then it sat around a lot. The interior has been redone on it. It's really clean. It's probably one of the cleanest cars at seven years old you'll ever see. So actually, the little backstory on this car, I was actually offered to buy this car uh, about a month ago, and I turned it down because, like I said before, I'm into muscle cars. I've always been into muscle cars, cars that go fast. And while I appreciate these kind of cars, I'm not a big uh, Ford flathead guy or flathead guy in general. I know it costs a lot of money to make them run fast. This thing's probably got 100 horsepower, which is probably still more than my son's Mazda Miata, but it's not really my thing. And I wouldn't amount, I would have bought it probably just for take the car shows and to mess around, but I don't have a lot of room right now. I got other projects going on. And, uh, and I just think, you know, for me, I'd probably want to put maybe a 347 stroker in there, or a 5.8 fuelie, something like that, make it a little more interesting to drive. And I think this car deserves to be left the way it is and just enjoy it for what it is. So I actually passed this on to one of my good friends, and he jumped on it right away and bought it. And uh, so now it's here, getting a little bit of work done. <clears throat> I guess it's leaking. It's a three on the tree. I guess it's leaking a little bit of fluid out of the tail shaft by the dry shaft. So we're going to get it up. I'm going to get it up in the air and pull the dry shaft on it and we'll replace that seal. I'll kind of take you along with me while I do that. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, kind of like the backstory of this car. Definitely one of the neater cars that I've gotten to work on recently. And uh, we'll go from there. I, it shouldn't be too big of a job here. Hopefully, uh, I think the undercarriage is in pretty good shape on this. So hopefully uh, we can get it jacked up and on stands and I'll try to take you with me as best I can as far as changing the seal out. And uh, <laughs> what reminded me, I was actually got a late start today because uh, Marcus Theaters here in St. Louis, a few of the theaters are replaying Smoking the Bay on the big screen. So I went and saw that this afternoon and uh, got kind of a blast from the past. That's got me, got me thinking about, uh, you know, my preference in cars and all that. And then this car was scheduled to come in today for the repair so it's kind of a coincidence but it's a nice coincidence and uh, i guess enough talking we'll uh i'll get it jacked up in the air and take you with me on changing the seal all right so i got the car up in the air <clears throat> i'm always a little apprehensive uh lifting some a car like this just because it's older i've never worked on something this old but you know, when I work on older cars, I'm always a little apprehensive, especially when it's in really good shape like this, because you don't want to be the guy that uh, drops it off a jack or whatever, 70 years old, and somehow you mess it up. I mean, I work on newer cars all the time that are actually worth more than this car. 
but like I said, I uh, appreciate car. You know, I've been a car nut my whole life, so I appreciate cars. I really appreciate this car, and so we'll take a little extra special care with this. Not that we don't with any car, but uh, you know, you don't want to be the guy that messes up a seven-year-old car, puts a hole through the floorboard, or luckily this car has got a good solid frame. And it looks like it's a pretty good shape under there, so we put it right up on the jack stands. Uh, to do this oil seal, you're going to pull the dry shaft out, so you're going to want to get a small drain pan and get it ready. Uh, depending on the angle of the car, you may you won't lose that much fluid. Uh, sometimes you may not lose hardly any at all, maybe just what's in the tail shaft, but you're going to make a little bit of a mess, so expect to make a small mess when you do this, so go ahead and get your drain pan out and get that ready, get it up on jack stands, and then usually I, I jack up the rear when I do this job, uh, just to get the wheels off the ground because we're going to pull the dry shaft. You want to be able to rotate the dry shaft. You know, you don't want to, well basically you just want those wheels off the ground so you can rotate the dry shaft to get to the bolts. So the first order of business will be to pull that dry shaft. So I'll get the tools ready for that and we'll set it up under there and, and go from there. Alright, so I'm under this old Ford. Uh, you can see here, undercarriage is in pretty good shape. Looks like they undercoated it at one time a long time ago and that's starting to peel off a little. But this is all solid under here. Uh, the frame's real solid. This actually looks a lot better than most of these Chevy trucks I get coming in here with rusted out brake lines and uh, fuel lines and stuff. Not to go off on Chevy because I own Chevy, but just a fact of life around here in the Midwest. If you got a Chevy truck, you're going to have all kinds of rust on the undercarriage unless you take care of it. But anyway, this is, I've, like I said, I haven't, I don't have much experience with these older cars, but this is just your basic. The bolts go in this direction. You know, in the modern cars, most of them go in this way. So there's four of them just like a modern car. Half inch. We actually got to use, uh, I don't hardly ever use these anymore. Uh, American standard wrenches and sockets and stuff. Uh, it's pretty much a thing of the past nowadays. But So anyway, we're going to take all four of these out. And then you'll just, you'll just, you know, depending on the car, like I said, I don't know how long this has been in here, but usually I'll get a, a screwdriver or a small uh, pry bar. I'll just pry on this U-joint. You know, in between here, in between the pinion and the in the dry shaft, after all four of them are out, and uh, the dry shaft will pop out, and then we'll slide out towards the back of the car to get it loose from the transmission. So I'm gonna get these four out, and then I might try to show you how I pry these out. I guess I'm I'm here by myself, so it's hard to hold the camera and do all this at one time. But you get the general idea. So I'm gonna get these four out, and then I'll pick back up. All right, so now I got all four bolts out. Uh, the only thing that's a bummer about these is when this is up in here, uh, you can't use the box end wrench. There's not enough, they don't give you enough clearance on this pinion to actually use this in, so you have to use this in, which is not real, not the greatest thing when you're trying to get a bolt off, but they're not very tight. So I was going to pry this off, but I actually just barely pulled on it and it came off on its own. So what you want to do on this is grab your, put your thumb here and your finger up here, just pull these off. When you pull these off, you, you want to you want to make sure these caps don't fall off. So make sure, a lot of times I'll take tape and wrap them after I get this down. Because if these caps come off, there's little needle bearings in here. And when they fall out, it's a huge pain to get them lined back up and and, and put back on so the best thing is to just leave these caps on take a little bit of tape wrap it if you have to I know this bottom one's real loose so I think I'm gonna run a little bit of tape around it so I don't have to deal with it because there's you know 20 or 30 of those little needle bearings in there and if they fall out or, or get misplaced or whatever you're either gonna have if they fall out you can put them back together and put a little grease in there but it's a big pain in the butt or you can pet if you lose one, you have to put in a whole new U joint in. So, for this job, we're just going to run. I'm going to run a little bit of tape around this, so I don't these don't come off. 
and then I'll pull the dry shaft out of the transmission. All right, so you can see here I wrapped a little bit of duct tape around that to secure those those uh, bearing caps. You know, if I was on a lift or this was a newer car with tighter bearing caps, I may not have to do this. I mean, normally I won't wrap this unless I know I'm going to be, it's going to be a couple of days before I'm doing something else with the car. If I'm just doing a clutch or uh, pulling the transmission out and swapping out or something, I, I may not do this. But this car, just because they were so loose, uh, I went ahead and wrapped it. It's a safe, it's an easy, safe insurance as far as your needle bearings go. So just run one pass around it. It's good to go. And then I can move this dry shaft around. I don't have to worry about losing any bearings or anything like that. Because you may think it may not happen, but uh, Murphy's Law will always get you in the end. Uh, the dumbest things will happen and the bearing cap falls off and then you're looking for the little needle bearings everywhere. So just wrap it if you you know if you're not sure if you're not on a rack or something. Even if you're on a rack, sometimes I wrap them if uh, if they're loose like this one is. So now we'll pull this dry shaft out, and like I said before, you want to put a little pan under there, catch any fluid that might come out. So we'll move to that next. All right, so this is the seal that we're after right here. Uh, this actually is not flush with the transmission tail housing. Usually they're flush. Now I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not real familiar with these, obviously. Like I said, this is the oldest car I've ever worked on in my whole career. But usually this seal will be flush with the tail housing shaft here. It's actually sticking out a little bit, so I don't know. It actually looks like the dry shaft was farther in at one time, too. So I don't know if someone replaced this dry shaft at one time or what but that looks like that we used to go in a lot farther unless they had a different kind of seal some of these uh, seals have a longer boot on it to kind of protect the shaft I don't know if this one had it at one time or I, I, this, I don't know but uh, yeah so this seal is out a little bit I don't think that's you can tell it's a little bit wet around it so that's why he was concerned about it. I guess it's using a little bit of fluid so we're gonna pull this to get these dry shafts out, all you do is just slide them out. So just you'll grab them from behind and just slide it out like that. Now the dry shaft's out. You can see it's leaking a little bit. Nothing too horrible. Uh, so the next step is to get the seal out. And you know they have tools. You know you can get, use a screwdriver, a small one, and beat it out. Uh, you don't want to mar the transmission housing up when you do that. The other thing you can do if you don't have the tool and it's actually sticking out this far is you can put, uh, you know, a screwdriver or something here and beat it this way, beat it towards the, the driver's passenger side, and you'll collapse this bearing. But we're going to try the, sear, the, the bearing puller for, or the seal puller first and see if that works before we do anything. So. We'll give that a shot. Sometimes that'll <clears throat> the seal pullers that they sell will actually tear the seal up and you still can't get them out with those. Uh, and then you do what I would say, like you would come in from the side here with the punch and drive it out in a few different places. It'll collapse the seal and then it'll come out. But you just, you don't, the main thing, you don't want to uh, mar your transmission housing, especially the inside of it. Because that's, you know, if you get a bunch of Mars or you screw it up a little bit you'll have a leaking out of this end instead of out of this end This is where the actual seals at in the middle here and It's got a spring that goes around the inside it keeps it uh, and probably with this car city it probably dried out at one time and That's why it's leaking. So anyway, I'll get the seal puller And uh, we'll give that a shot before we do anything else. I usually have pretty good luck with those All right, so this is my handy dandy seal puller this thing, you know, they're pretty cheap. I get, I got this at the auto parts store. It's probably 20, 25 years old. I've had it forever. Pulled out hundreds of seals with it. Uh, it's actually a little messed up right here on the end. Because sometimes these seals will really fight you. But uh, the concept is you stick one of these ends, either this end or this end. You know, inside like that. And then you, and then you, uh, you know, just pull on it and force it out. 
So I don't think I'm going to be able to do this and hold the camera at the same time. But that's the concept. You put one of these ends in here, inside there like that, and then you, you know, you would jerk on it this way and pop that out. And usually, if you get a good enough grip in there and jerk on it fast enough and hard enough, and that's not, you know, that's not a sexual reference there, but uh, you know, you use that movement, it'll uh, pop that seal out. Sometimes you'll get some that it will just fight you to the end and you have to knock them out. But we're praying today to the four gods that this one will not do that. Even if it does, it's not that big of a deal. But, you know, usually this is like a five second thing. So I'm going to do that and put, I'm going to put the camera down and do that. Hopefully it comes out. If it doesn't come out, I'll show you, you know, because a lot of times that, that hook will, will rip this part of the seal if it doesn't come out. Then you're gonna move around and, and you know move to a different place and try different uh, you know different places, but we're gonna hope it doesn't do that and it comes out on one shot. So I'm gonna put the camera down, do that, and we'll see what happens. All right, so this is what happens when uh, this tool fails. What it does is it rips the it actually rips the seal. That hook will just rip the outside of the seal right out. So now we got to get serious with it. Uh, like I said, most times that tool works, and you can get them at any auto parts store. They're fairly cheap. But this does happen when they're in there sometimes, and who knows how long this one's been in there. But now we got to get serious with it. So what I'll do is. I wish this uh, emergency brake cable wasn't in the way, It'd make it a little easier, but uh, I'll start with something like this, you know, it's a regular drift, flat drift, and what you do is you put it, since this, since this seal's sticking out, we would put it on the outside here. Now a lot of them have uh, little hats that go all the way around that you can get under and collapse them that way, but this one doesn't have that, it's a flush, it's just a regular old school seal so I'll put this here beat on it and that'll push this metal towards the shaft and you get it on a couple different sides and then this thing will just flop right out so we'll uh, try that next and unfortunately that happens sometimes on these seals they, they get in there and they're old and they're you get that tool in there and it, it just rips the seal instead of bringing the seal out of the sh out of the housing so this will be our next step is to put this up against there you know and again you want to be careful but we'll stick it right there against the seal and we'll drive it towards this shaft here and uh, do that a couple different places you know on each side and uh, the seal should come out all right so we might have to change this video uh, from change the seal to how you don't want the seal change to go. You can see here, it's pretty mangled up. Uh, the seal is just falling apart. Here's a bunch of it right here. So, you can see here I got the outside of the seal caved in. So I'll keep working around it. This will eventually pop out. Uh, I've been working this about 10, 15 minutes now. You know, it turned in from a simple seal seal job to a nightmare. But uh, you know, a car this old, I don't know how old, I don't know how long this has been in here. But this is not how you want it to go when you do one of these. And I would say 98.9% .9 of the time, you can pull these seals out with that tool that I showed you earlier, with just a quick. You know get it in there and jerk on it real hard and it'll usually pop those right out this thing is definitely wanting to fight me i thought it was gonna be nice to me since i found a nice home for the car but now we're gonna he's gonna go a couple rounds with tyson at this point uh so yeah i got this starting to cave in now one thing i'm not doing is marring up the inside of this transmission case i'm putting everything on the seal don't want to start hitting the transmission case 
because then the new seal will never will never seal. So I'm gonna continue to work on this, and when I get it almost out, I'll show you. But yeah, it's it's turning ugly. But one way or the other, it's gonna come out of there. So and it's gonna come out of there without damaging the transmission. So this is like I said, this is not how you this is not how you want your job to go, and this is not how they usually go. But uh, with a car this old, you never know. So we're getting into it now. So I'm gonna finish working on this, and we'll get this out. All right, so you can see here it's out. The transmission case is not barred up. Uh, here is the uh, seal. We'll take it over a bench. I'll talk about this a little bit more and uh, kind of go over it. And then what our plan of attack is with the new one up. All right, so I got this seal back on the bench here. Uh, you know, when it comes out looking like this, you know you didn't have a fun time. Uh, one thing I will say, this took about 15, 20 minutes maybe to get out, maybe a little less, I don't know. I wasn't timing myself, but it took way longer than it should or normally does. But on something like this, uh, you don't want to get mad or angry or lose your head and start beating on things. You want to slow down, take your time, and uh, you don't want to mar up a 70-year-old transmission. You don't want to mar up any transmission because it's you know you're taking a $10 seal and turning it into a major repair. So. Uh, you know, as a mechanic or a technician, you learn to slow down and you learn to adapt to the situation, which is what, you know, we, what I did here. Uh, I've, you know, I've had problems like this before with these seals, so I have experience with this, but uh, with this seal here, you know, half of this will stick it out. So what you want to do is, is beat on it on one side and go on the other side and beat on it. And then this side started to come, started to collapse first. And once it starts to collapse, I kind of, what I usually do is put a drift here on this part of it and, and drive it down a little bit. And that'll pull away, you know, but you don't want to be on the transmission part. You want to be on the seal. And that'll just kind of collapse it inward towards the output shaft. And that's what takes a lot of the pressure off. So once it just started to do that, then I went back on this side and started hitting this and it popped right out. But you want to take, I know this looks like it's really mangled and I went crazy on it, but this actually was... Uh, I was very careful when I was doing this because, you, you know, like I said, you don't want to repair the transmission case. So even though it looks like it's like I put a bomb in there and set it off, and I actually took quite a bit. I took my time, slowed down, didn't get too angry about it, and uh, got it out without marring anything up. Now this new one, uh, you can, you know, put transmission fluid or, or gear oil around the inner. This is the rubber part. You want to you want to lubricate that. Then I usually lubricate the outside of these with transmission assembly lube. And then you're going to get a socket. They have tools, seal drivers and stuff. But since the output shaft, you know, sits out past the seal itself, uh, usually what I do is just put a, get a big uh, axle socket or whatever big, big enough socket to fit on this. And you want it to be on the outside of this edge as possible. You don't want it on the inside diameter. You don't want to be beating on this rubber seal at all. And you want to be far away from it as possible. And you want to put this in, you know, I'll go under there and show you, but you want to put this in level as possible and start on it. If it starts to go a little too wacky one way or the other, your best bet is to try to pull this out gingerly and start over. You don't want to put it in and then it's cocked like this and just try to drive it the rest of the way in because you'll end up ruining the seal, which is not a big deal. It's 10 bucks, but you don't want to do the job twice. So... Uh, the starting of this is the most important part. You want to start it as level and straight as possible and give it some, you know, tap it in slowly. And then once it's about halfway in, you can kind of drive it in a little harder. Uh, but if it's, and you want to keep checking it and make sure it's still straight. If it starts to veer a little bit, you know, one corner or another, then concentrate your hits on that if it's already halfway in or more. Like I said, you don't, if this is barely in and it starts to do that, just pull it back out. And start over because you, these seals are pretty easy to ruin so I'm gonna go ahead and lube this up and then I'll get back under there and I'll show you uh, as much as I can of putting this back in and remember this one wasn't flush uh, with the transmission but I think what I'm gonna do this might have been a little bit taller seal too I'm not sure because it's so mangled now it's hard to tell but what I would probably do is, is drive this in flush with the transmission case that's normally how they are. I've never seen one stick that far out before, like this one was. 
So I'm gonna get this ready and get back under there and I'll show you what, what the next step is. All right, so I'm back under here. Uh, I went ahead and took the air hose, sprayed this all out, make sure it's nice and clean. And I took, uh, probably can't see on the camera, I got some transmission assembly lube. I just took a light coating and put it around. Makes the seal go on a little bit easier. Some people put silicone around the outside of the seal to keep it from leaking. I normally don't do that because I, I haven't had much trouble with that happening, but uh, I have seen or heard people doing that. Uh, and then I took the new seal and it's got transmission assembly lube on the inside and on the outside. You don't have to use transmission assembly lube. You can use whatever you have, transmission fluid, uh, gear oil, whatever. This transmission takes gear oil, so if I was going to use that, I would just take a little bit of the stuff that came out of it from the pan, just run the light bead across it. And then I have, you know, this big socket. So what I'm going to do is just put that seal up there and just keep this socket as level as possible and just tap on it a little bit until I get it started and uh, go from there. Alright, <clears throat> again, not to keep repeating myself, but I got this about halfway in now. And it's pretty level, or pretty straight all the way around. Uh, like I said before, I know I keep repeating myself, but just take your time with this, putting these in. If they go in crooked, uh, you'll ruin the seal. It's funny because, like we saw with the last seal, it was really hard to get out. But, going in, you can ruin it real fast. So... Take your time, tap them in slow, tap them in even. Keep taking your socket or whatever you're using to drive it in off and checking it to make sure it's going in even. And once you get to about this point where it's about halfway in, you're usually pretty good. You can usually drive it in. And that's the other thing, don't drive this past, you know. Normally I drive these in flush with the, the end of this housing. Uh, you know what? <clears throat> Some of them uh, you can drive actually past there. You don't want to do that. So, unless the one you took out was way past there for some reason. You know, every transmission is different. But in general, these seals usually are flush with whatever they're going into. So, <clears throat> at this point, it's nice and level all the way around. It's halfway in. So, I'll just drive it the rest of the way in. I'll still keep taking my socket off and checking it. And once it's flush, I'm good to go. All right, that's just, this is how it should look when you're done. This is nice and flush all the way around. It's nice and even. There's no high or low spots. So this is seated in there properly. I started out using this socket on it. I didn't like it. Uh, you can tell it's, it, it doesn't fill up the whole entire uh, seal. I didn't like that. So I went, got to use a bigger socket. I use this socket. This is for four-wheel drive, lock nuts. And you can see there, it goes all the way around the seal almost to the end. So this is what I ended up using to drive the seal in. So the next step, uh, and what, I guess I'll point out, you know, I really didn't lose any fluid on this. Probably maybe an ounce or two at the most. So, <clears throat> uh, there really would be no need to put any more fluid in this. Uh, but you'd want to check it anyway, because if you had a seal leaking, your transmission could be low on fluid anyway. So it needs to be checked. Uh, the customer's actually going to check it. Uh, he's got fluid at home for this. And I didn't lose enough here to do, to do any damage if you would drive it. I lost maybe an ounce at the most. So, <clears throat> and uh, on this transmission... This is the drain plug for the transmission. This is a three-speed uh, manual transmission. This is the drain plug. And here on the side, I don't know if I can get in there. What you would do is take this plug out right here. And the fluid should basically be level with this plug. It, you know, if it's a little bit lower than that, it's fine. Maybe stick your finger in there. If you can feel the fluid with your finger in there, then the fluid level is probably fine. If you lost a lot of fluid for some reason or let this go and let it leak for a long time, uh, now would be a good time to just go ahead and drain the fluid. Take this out and then take this out. You know, obviously put this, drain the fluid, put this back in. And then take this plug out right here. 
and uh, fill it up. And normally what you do with that is you fill it up till the fluid starts to run out the side here a little bit, and that's full enough. That's, and then you put this plug back in and you're good to go. So that, that, this would be a good time to do that. Uh, but like I said, the customer actually has oil at home for this transmission. And we didn't lose enough here to do any damage. So uh, I'm going to let him deal with that. Hopefully this will come off. It looks like it might. Sometimes these can be a real pain in the butt to get off. A lot of them, this is obviously an old car, so it's got an old style square head on it. A lot of them now have uh, uh, female square heads on them. So we're going to, my next thing now, obviously, would be to slide the dry shaft back, back into here. And I guess when you put the dry shaft in, uh, line up and make sure it's straight before you just don't just put it up here and jam into the seal. You know, you want to line, line that yoke up onto here and slide it in. Uh, one other thing I would add about this yoke here is uh, you want to make sure this is nice and smooth around it. I like to take an emery bat or, you know, a, a pad and uh, scuff, clean this up real good before you put it in the new, before you slide it across the new seal. This one, uh, it's got a little bit of, it feels pretty smooth. <clears throat> I've already scuffed it up a little bit, <clears throat> or smoothed it out, but I'll probably smooth it out some more uh, before I put it back in the transmission. So just get some memory cloth or, you know, something like this, and just, uh, you know, run it across the shad to make sure it's nice and smooth. All right, again, you just <clears throat> line this yoke up with the splines on the transmission, get it started like that, and then just go ahead and push, you, you know, you push the dry shaft in, lift up on the back of it, and push it in. And uh, then you'll be done up here, and then we'll go to the back and put the U-joint, the uh, U-bolts back in. Alright, we're getting closer to being done with this job. So I got the dry shaft pushed all the way up into the transmission. Uh, I'll take this tape off. I'll be careful not to pull these caps off. And... Whether it's automatic or manual transmission, put it in neutral. That way you can rotate this dry shaft and get it lined back up with your pinion. So, next step is take your tape off and then we'll line it up with the pinion and start the bolt. Alright, on the newer cars, these end, the end of these uh, U-joints, the bearing caps, it's just completely round. And then they have U-bolts uh, that come around it and bolt into the pinion. This is actually, this uh, bearing cap is actually part of the bracket that goes into the pinion. Which is kind of interesting. I've never seen one like that. Uh, again, I don't work on cars this old normally. But, uh, so this has a little, little notch here. There's a notch. There's a notch in the pinion, so you want to line those up and then start your bolts. All right, now uh, it's all lined up, got the bolts in. You want to make sure this is seated real nice. You, you know, use your fingers and pull these bearing caps in tight, and then move the dry shaft towards this pinion. And you can see right here, there's a notch. So you want the pinion, you want the, the uh, bearing cap to be on the other side of this, this notch here. That's what holds it in. So you want to make sure that this is uh, seated nice. Start all your bolts, just like you would uh, anything. And then you want to run these down pretty even. Don't just torque one down real tight and then go to the next. Now on this particular setup, you could probably do that and get away with it. But if you're working on a, a you know the newer cars with the U-bolts, you don't want to do that. And you don't want... <laughs> You know, you want to make sure you do this uh, right because, I mean, I've had a couple of race cars. I actually had a race car lose a dry shaft. It does all kinds of damage. And then I've had a big 4x4 four four that I was showing off for in front of someone's house. And uh, lost my dry shaft one time on that. So, uh, both, it, both times I lost my dry shaft, it's because of torque. But... You know, you can't lose these if you don't seat these right. So make sure they're seated right. And, uh, 
you know, run these down evenly. Don't just tighten one down and go to the next one. Uh, run them down to their flush and then tighten them a little bit and then move on to the next one and go back a couple times so that there's a nice even pressure on there. Uh, these actually weren't very tight when I took them off. So my plan is to make these a little bit tighter, putting them back on. I don't want this dry shaft falling out. All right, one last thing I'll add about this before we wrap this up is, you know, if you're putting these bolts in and the transmission is neutral, you'll obviously be able to spin this dry shaft uh, and it'll try to spin while you're tightening it. So usually what I do is put a big screwdriver right in this gap and I'll use that to hold it while I'm tightening these bolts down and then you can spin it around and get to the next bolt you need. Uh, it's easier than getting it up in and out from another car or putting the transmission neutral and in, in, in first gear or park so that's just a little t little tip I you know just a little tip you just have a screwdriver big one put it in this gap and uh, use that to hold it while you tighten the bolts down that way you're not getting in and out from under the car so we're gonna uh, I guess we're pretty much done with this video go back to the front here So if you have a transmission leak and it's coming out, you know, it's running down this seal and dripping down, then it's probably this seal. So uh, it's pretty common on that stupid emergency brake cable was really in the way. It was in the way during the job. It's in the way with the camera. It's kind of a dumb place to put it, I guess, you know, whatever, but, uh, you know, if you see, if this, if you're transmission is wet back here and, and uh, your cross member or whatever that's a good place to check first this seal right here it'll leak you know it'll come you can see it it'll drip the bottom of the seal will be wet with fluid and a lot of times it'll run down here and then drip down the cross member or leave a spot in the driveway or whatever but uh, that little rubber wears out in there and uh, causes a leak so the only thing left now is to get it off the stands and uh, wrap it up all right so I'm just gonna close this video out uh, main things I want to reiterate is uh, you know sometimes your days go like this working on cars uh, it happens the big thing to remember if this does happen to you or you have a problem with a car just just calm down take your time if you don't have the knowledge or experience to fix it then uh, seek out that information before you make something worse than what it, you know you don't want to make more work or create more money problems for yourself uh, I know it can be frustrating uh, but yeah it, uh, you know that kind of experience I, my son's in automotive right now in the high school tech class and I you know I try to reiterate to him all the time this isn't an easy field people think uh, oh you're a grease monkey or uh, you know, you're just turning wrenches, but one of the reasons why I like automotive so much is because it challenges your brain. You know, you got to have obviously hand eye coordination and, and experience with the tools and all that. But these newer cars and even the older cars will challenge your brain. You know, things that, you know, you might take out a hundred of these seals and they go, it goes real smooth. Then you get that one or two, and then you have to have the experience and the knowledge uh, to know what to do in that situation so and then like I said these newer cars electronics and stuff that's a whole other level and I actually love it I love uh, working on electronic electrical stuff and the electronics and all that and using my scan tool and uh, finding troubleshooting problems like that because that really challenges my brain I've been turning wrenches for over 30 years you can only do so many timing belts or you know rebuild so many engines or whatever but these newer cars have all kinds of newer challenges and uh, and all kinds of newer issues and things we haven't seen before and it's I really enjoy it I enjoy uh, learning new things if you're gonna be a mechanic uh, you have to constantly learn and constantly grow and uh, constantly learn uh, you know expand your mind with it because these cars change constantly and I have to say this is I can't think of any other older car I've ever worked I think this is technically the oldest car I ever worked on in my whole career that car is actually I believe a year older than my house so you're talking about a seven-year-old car uh, 
So that was fun. It didn't go as smooth as I'd like it to go, but, uh, you know, all in all, probably an hour, maybe less. And hopefully this video might help somebody. Uh, this is pretty, these seals are pretty universal, even though this is a 1950 Ford. The same, uh, con these, you know, these seals are basically the same. They still use these seals on transmissions today, so it's a pretty universal thing, uh, you know, on removing and putting these back in. And uh, I have another car coming in, possibly next week or soon. It's a uh, older uh, GMA body. That's all I'll say for now. I got to order some parts for it, but uh, pretty excited about that because that's. This car is right in the era that I love to work on, which is the muscle car area, the era, like 65 to 72, somewhere in there. Got that Jeep with the parasitic draw. I never followed up on that. Uh, since I fixed the door wires and all that, it hasn't done that. It hasn't, it's been starting up. It's been sitting about three days right now and uh, starts right up. So I don't know if that was something to do with the power locks on that or what, but as of now, it's fixed. I was kind of excited. I got this tool from Lyle. It's a parasitic drain tester, and you can actually hook this up, and it protects your meter when you're trying to do parasitic draw, troubleshooting. Uh, it has a switch on it, and it protects your meter, and, and you can leave it uh, your meter hooked up to it while the other computer components are still shutting down. So it's going to save you a lot of time. So some of these newer cars, some of them take half hour, 45 minutes or longer for the, all the modules to shut down. So it can be a challenge to find a parasitic draw or, you know, if it's is it a parasitic draw or is it supposed to do that for some reason some of these modules don't time out now for quite a long time after it's off so this is kind of a neat little time saver tool but i don't think i'll be using it on the jeep so i uh i think that's it cars off the stands and ready to go back home i'll give him a call and uh like i said he said he's going to check the transmission fluid or whatever so that's that's up to him if you were doing this job at home or whatever uh I would highly recommend checking your transmission level. If not changing the fluid, minimum of uh, checking your level on it before you drive it too much. Now we didn't, we only lost maybe an ounce of fluid when we did this. And that's pretty typical of these when you pull the trash shaft out. Now some of them, especially automatic transmissions, you can lose a quart, you know, easily, especially if it's up in the air and it's, it's not level. So something to keep in mind, but for me, this one's done and uh, gonna go back to uh, his home and we'll be on the next one.